Jesus today um, comes walking up to these two disciples uh, on their way to Emmaus. And they don't recognize him. So if I was going to ask a question to the students, when, if you were here, I would ask you, so why did they not recognize Jesus? Why could they not recognize him? Because I think that's an interesting question for us to ponder. Why did they not see him? Or seeing him, why did they not recognize him? During the Easter season, uh, we're privileged to read through the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles uh, tells the story about the early church. The Acts of the Apostles starts with Pentecost. And so we hear about what happened in the hearts of the disciples after, after Pentecost. We see how, what a complete change there is in them. We see that in this, this scene of Peter and John. It's one of my favorite stories in the Acts of the Apostles. Because you see a completely different Peter than we were seeing last week during Holy Week during all those Masses. Completely changed. He looks at that, 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 that beggar who's crippled and he says, he looks at him intently and says, and he says, kind of like, I don't, look at me, I, I don't have money, I don't have money to give you, I don't have food to give you, I've got something much better to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So he calls on the name of Jesus and says, rise and walk and the guy gets up and he walks and so now what Jesus was doing before now the apostles are doing now Jesus is there alive in them working in them but we're still when we hear the gospel we're still in that we're not at Pentecost yet so we hear about these two disciples and I want to think about them with you today so they couldn't recognize Jesus why was that well, their understanding was not... They didn't have the right understanding. Um, they were walking away from Jerusalem. Just think that somebody had said, the, the tomb's empty, Jesus is not there. They saw angels and they're still like, I don't know what to do. They were completely overwhelmed and sad. They were downcast is what we hear in the gospel. They were downcast. They were probably fearful. They were afraid. They were confused. They didn't understand. And so they're walking away. They're leaving the community and walking away. How beautiful is that in their confusion and in their sadness and their in their um, in their in their fear that Jesus comes walking up. It's a reminder to us that. When we're in that state of confusion and sadness and fear, Jesus comes walking with us in that. And guess what? A lot of times Jesus, are, are, every, Jesus is always with us. And so Jesus is walking with us, but we don't, often we don't recognize Him. We don't understand that it's Him. We don't see how He's present with us. So I've just been thinking about that in terms of what all the whole world is going through. You know, there's so much uncertainty. So much of our lives have been turned upside down. We can't do the things that we want to do. Things aren't the way that we think they should be. Are we able to see Jesus walking with us in this? Are we able to recognize Him in the ways that He does come walking with us? with us. Because He does. He is with us. There's all kinds of ways that He does that. Beautiful, simple ways. These two disciples were like, they look at, look at this man that they've encountered. They think it's a regular old man. Just, I don't understand why they couldn't recognize Jesus there. But they couldn't. I think it's the sadness, the confusion, the fear. They're just caught up in their own stuff. They're just focused on themselves. And they're like, are you the only person that doesn't know what just happened here? How this great and wonderful man, he was a prophet, he was God, worked through him powerfully. Don't you know that, that, that God was present with him? And now the leaders of our religion have killed him and taken him, you know, 
So then Jesus looks at them and goes, I tried so hard to make you understand it, you still don't understand. How foolish are y'all? And then what does he do? Jesus explains, he goes back basically through salvation history. It says he starts with Moses and goes all the way through up to the crucifixion and his death and burial and explains to them how God had been preparing for this. That this was God's plan all along. In a way, what we believe is that this was God's plan since the original sin of Adam and Eve. That this was God's plan since for all eternity. Because God sees things from eternity. And so Jesus explains that to them. And so their minds were, were their confusion was clarified. They began to understand and to see things. And what does it say? Weren't, they said, weren't our hearts burning within us as he explained it to us? You know, that's one of the things about, about um, Catholic truth and, 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 and uh, truth that we learn in school. Beyond Catholic truth or, or, or even, even, uh, even just plain old universal truths. Plain old scientific truth. Learning truth, uh, understanding truth in the, in the light of literature and art and all of that. Is that it brings us joy. It brings us clarity. It helps us to understand ourselves, understand our world, understand each other, understand God. So Jesus brings clarity and understanding. Their hearts burn within them. They're so grateful for that. They still don't know it's Jesus, though, do they? They don't know it's Jesus. And so Jesus acts like he's going to keep walking. Well, they've been intrigued and been blessed by this person that they've encountered. And so they go, please stay with us. Stay and tell us some more. Talk with us some more. And so Jesus does. And then they sit down to a meal. And what happens? When we hear those words, we as Catholics are, are hearing those words that remind us of the Eucharist, right? Jesus took bed, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them. That's what we're, you're going to hear that, those same words that when we consecrate the bread and the wine. In the breaking of the bread, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And as soon as they understood completely, as soon as they understood and saw that it was him, then he vanished. Jesus had given them what they needed. He'd given them the truth and he'd shared himself with them. Himself in the breaking of the bread. Where does the road to Emmaus end? It doesn't end there. I mean, they've, they're clear, their, their minds have been clarified. Their understanding has been clarified. Their fears have been washed away. Their sadness, they're, they've been uplifted. So what do they do? They don't just sit there and just say, oh, this is wonderful for me. No, they go back to the community. That encounter with Jesus and, and understanding Jesus and, 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 and recognizing Him and understanding that He is with them. Then they go back to take that to the community. Of course, the community says, yeah, Peter saw him. He's been with Peter. We know he's alive. And they're there rejoicing and celebrating. So we look forward to the day when we can gather again here in the church to celebrate. But guess what? We're all here together virtually. We're all here together in spirit. And Jesus is in our midst. Wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. And we're not in that time of the, the disciples of Emmaus. We're now in the time of Jesus and John and of, of Peter and John. We're in the time of when the Holy Spirit has been given to us. So during this Easter season, especially during this Easter octave, we ask the Lord to, again, deepen our understanding of His truth, of His way. Help calm our fears. Help us to to overcome the sadness that, 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 that many of us feel. Deepen our faith, Lord. Our faith that you are alive and that you are with us. That's my prayer for all of us this, this 
Easter day, 